Dante was betrayed and got carnage. Part... Alright, I believe this is four. Yeah, part four. By Wacky Anime What If. Okay. Hope you guys are ready. And please stay tuned. Okay, so Issei has just woken up. He gets out of bed. Walks down the stairs. And currently he's... As soon as he wakes up in the morning every day... He just gets up and is thinking about how he can torture all who have betrayed him. And he is just laughing maniacally, just right in the morning too, right when he got up. And he just starts walking towards the door, opens the door, and is to, uh, leading out of his room, walks out, walks down the stairs, and goes into the kitchen. And he decides to go ahead and make some eggs, bacon some sausage, some... Hmm. Well, he decided to also make some pancakes. He eats all of this, and Carnage is saying, Hey, give me some. Give me some. And Carnage pops out. His head pops out of his back, and he, he starts feeding Carnage some food. And they both start eating. Carnage is mowing down a second plate that he had to make for Carnage himself, because he wanted to eat. And he said, this isn't as tasty as heads. We need to eat some more heads. And Issei says, oh, I plan on doing that. But I don't know who to take out first right now. Because I'm thinking, well, from what I showed you yesterday, it wasn't that bad of an experience for them. I'm thinking of showing them something even worse. Also, I hope they like that special dinner I made for them. <laughs> and he starts just bursting out in laughter. And Carnage is also laughing, retreating back into Issei, and now laughing inside of Issei's head. And Issei gets up, walks to his door, opens it, and starts walking to Kohai, and his uniform, which he always has on, honestly. He always gets it on, like, immediately in the morning. So, yeah, when he's walking to school and to Kohai, as soon as he walks his first step on the Kohai premises... Everyone's staring at him like he's the devil incarnate. They're looking at him like he is the plague. They don't want to get ten feet near him now. Everyone's literally separated from him. And he just he just looks at them and says, About time he showed some fucking respect. And this one kid trip was like tripped over a pebble in front of him. And Issei saw him on the ground in front of him. And yeah, Issei just went batshit crazy. He was like, you disrespect me by even being in my presence? Huh? He picks him up, starts wailing on him, just punches him so hard that three of his teeth are fall flying out. He is lifting this man in the air, punching him. His teeth are falling out. And he's punching him in the gut while he's bleeding out of his mouth now already. And Issei just throws him to the ground and starts stomping on him viciously, right in the chest. And this kid is literally looking like he's having a panic attack right now. But Issei does not care. And Carnage is loving every second of this and just keeps on whispering in his ear, Continue. Destroy. Show them true Carnage. And Issei is doing just that. When he's beaten him so badly that almost all of his bones are broken and he's unrecognizable, he just walks away. And everyone saw this. But no one had the balls to record. Because they thought if they tried to record this, they would be first. They would be next. And Kohai has no school, no actual security cameras in the in the front of their school. They don't have anything into the gate. Only stuff inside the school premises, really. And most times they're literally doing maintenance on it. Kohai is still kind of poorish. Because, well, the Rias Grimmery doesn't fund them enough. Because they're very greedy with their money. So, Issei just walks into the school and just has this big smile. This wacky smile. The, those sinister eyes. And anyone that sees him just knows not to get near this man. So, as soon as he walked into the building, everyone who was in, at the front of the building trying to get to their classes, they all stopped and started running to their classrooms. They didn't even care if their classes weren't that way. They ran into another direction away from him. And Issei just walked up to the steps and started singing a song. 
And he said, time to bash, time to bash. It's time to bash your skull in half and all over. All over the walls, all over the halls. And he just starts singing this while walking down the halls. Everyone is literally just, like, making way for him. And he just walks all over to his classroom. He knocks on the door and says, Hey, teach, could you open the door for your favorite students? And he literally just starts tap dancing, and like, right behind the door. He starts tap dancing. And as soon as the teacher, like, opens the door, he just punches the teacher in the face. He's like, thank you, you smuck. And he starts violently beating on the teacher. And this is just getting worse. The teacher is literally just getting punched in the face and getting assaulted by this man. And this teacher is terrified. Because that one punch already knocked the wind out of him. He fell to the ground immediately. And his nose was broken. But... Issei just got on top of him and started punching him in the face more. And with each punch, you could hear some bones breaking in his face. And everyone's just staring at him doing this. And they're very terrified. And they're wondering, how the hell has he not been expelled yet from this? And this one kid, this brave kid, pulls out his phone to try to record this. And he does record it. But before he could even really record anything that's happening, Issei gets up, he stops, he runs towards the kid, grabs his phone, phone, smashes against his face, some of the glass entering into his face, and he smashes his head against the desk, drags him towards where the teacher is, and smashes his body on top of the teacher, lifts him up again, smashes him on top of the teacher again, and then he drags both of them to the front of the class and slam their faces in front of the chalkboard leaving imprints of blood, a bloody face on both the sides of the chalkboard. And then he throws them to the ground. And he looks at everyone and says, You didn't see anything here. All you saw was that this student here started to fight this teacher. And it was self-defense, am I right? And he says this with a sinister smile and radiating, terrifying bloodlust. And everyone shook their head. Even Konako shook her head. And Issei just went all the way to the back, and everyone was starting to spread their seats away from Issei. And Issei let them, but as soon as Koniko tried to spread her seat away, Issei just said, No, 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 you don't have the luxury to do so. And I changed my seat from in front of you to right beside you, my dear Koniko. <laughs> he just starts smiling and laughing slightly, and Koniko is just very terrified. She is shaking. And... Issei, Issei just sits right next to her and says, How about this, my little kitty cats? I won't do anything to you if you just stay out of my way. After all, I'm not really interested in a poor little helpless kitty cat. You look so adorable when you're shivering. It just makes me want to rip out your insides and string them all over campus. And he says this with a sadistic smile, and he's whispering this in her ear. She has a cold, eerie sweat go down her, and she is just terrified. And she's nodding to this. She's like, I, I won't get in your way, you say. I, I promise, just, just don't do anything to me. And she's just terrified, because she remembers what happened to that one kid. And how he turned into something that was inhuman, impossible, some monster. And she was terrified. Terrified of this. And she started thinking about the old Issei. Wow, how did he get like this? She knows now, because of the, she already found out about Reese's betrayal, but she didn't think this would infect him that bad. And, well, Issei legit just stared in the front of the classroom while a Sub had to come in. And when the sub came in and saw those two bodies on the ground, he just said, Who did this? And all of them were about to look towards where Issei was and point their fingers, but Issei let out some blood-chilling, killing intent. This murderous aura behind them compelled them to point towards the student on the ground and said, This student fought the teacher. He was starting to brutalize him, and the teacher fought back and shattered his phone into his face. And then the substitute teacher dragged both of them to the nurse's office. 
I started teaching the class, which Issei was listening to while twirling a pencil in his hand, which the substitute teacher got kind of annoyed with and said, uh, Issei Hyodo, could you please stop doing that insolent act of twirling that pencil around? You're distracting everyone, or at least me. And Issei was not happy about this. And everyone looked back, and they were in fucking fear while looking at Issei. And they were thinking, this teacher just fucked up. And Issei just says, oh, okay, teach, I'll stop twirling this if you want. Instead of twirling it, I can... And then all of a sudden, he just... Bl the teacher blinks. Issei's right in front of the teacher, grabs his hand, puts it in front of the teacher's desk, and stabs this pencil straight through his hand, and going straight through the desk. And the teacher's howling in pain, and Issei just presses his head against the desk and says, I'll just beat a little bitch up. And he just starts smashing his head against the desk over and over. And everyone's paralyzed in fear. He does this all the way until the bell rings. And the teacher's unconscious, and he was still doing it. And everyone's just fearfully running to get out of that class. And, yeah, Issei just walks out. And just... Konako is just trying to keep, like, seven miles away. But Issei just grabs Konako, picks her up, and says, Uh, I want to eat some lunch with my beautiful little kitty. And Konako is terrified of Issei right now. But she knows if she resists Issei, he, she may die. So she just lets Issei carry her. He, he goes to the cafeteria, looks, looks at the lunch lady, and says, Hi there, little lunch lady. Well, or should I say fat-ass lunch lady, because you look like a giant-ass fucking pumpkin. No, no, no. Scratch that. You look like... You look like a blimp. Who lit a blimp in this school? And your parking is way off. And he just starts laughing to himself about this while saying this to the lunch lady. Lunch Lady looks at him with anger, and she already hated him because of the rumors. And, well, because, well, ORC, if Rias hates someone, everyone's going to hate them, usually. And, well, let's just go ahead and say that Issei just said, Oh, also, give me my fucking food before I beat your ass, you old fucking hag. And he stares at her and has such blood and killing intent that she just gives him his food. Give some extra food. It's like, please spare my life. She's saying this in her mind. And she's panicking. And she has tears coming out of her eyes. And everyone seeing this is just very fucking scared. Because they would do the same thing in her situation. And she gives Issei, like, mountains of food. And he says, oh yeah, give me all your sweets. And don't try to charge me anything for them. And he goes up right beside her. Just literally looks like a teleported beside her. And says, or I'll go to your house, kill your family in front of you, and stream their guts on a Christmas tree whenever it's Christmas, and say, here's your birthday gift, you fat bitch. And he just hello looks like he teleports back to his original spot in front of the line, and oh my god, this shit chills down the lunch lady's fucking spine. And she just gives him all the sweets, everything. And Issei just takes Konako, who's still in, her, who's still in his hands, all to the roof, gives her a second plate, and gives half the food that he got to her. It's like, here you go. You need to eat and get some big and strong, little kitty. After all, you trembling like that isn't very fun. So can you please knock it off before I actually do something to you? And Konako is just in fear, but she realizes she's just being toyed with, and she decides to calm down before she actually does get pissed off. And Issei just says, oh, and I know you like sweets, so here's a few lollipops. And he just gives her a few lollipops, and Konako just munches down on it, uncaring. And Issei has the urge, just the urge by Carnage, to literally munch on heads. So Issei just starts eating all of his food very quickly and tells Konako, we'll be in touch. I'll talk to you later. And he just legit 
doesn't even go down the stairs when he's on the roof. Just goes to the roof, jumps the fence on the roof, and jumps all the way down to the first floor and lands perfectly, unharmed. And it's because Carnage came out on the legs. And Issei just walked back into the building and said, hmm, what can I do? And then while he's walking into the building, he notices through, through the window, he notices Kiba. He's sitting in front of a tree. And Issei has a devious smile in his mind. And he decides, hmm, I think I found the perfect snack. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> he just starts laughing maniacally inside and out. Kiba can actually hear this from where he's sitting. Because it's just outside of where Issei's looking. And he looks and sees through the window, sees Issei. And, he, and just so you know, Kiba does not know why, but all the senses are saying to fucking run. Get away from the school. And get out of here. So he follows them. He's about to start running, but he looks back towards the window and sees that Ishe is gone. And all of a sudden, he feels a tap on his shoulder. And he looks up behind him, right towards where the tree is. And he sees Ise crawling the side of the tree, tapping his shoulder. And he screams in horror and starts to run. And then... Issei starts laughing maniacally, jumps down, lands on his feet, and just says, Go ahead and run and hide. It doesn't make it any fun if you don't. I'll even give you some a five-minute head start. And we're going to cu cut to, e to Kiba. Kiba's running all the way out of the school. Doesn't want to go to the ORC because he doesn't want to involve any of them. And they're on a trip. Everyone except for Konako and Kiba right now. And Kiba... Legit is running out of the school premises, and he's running viciously and running as fast as he can, using all the stamina to get away. He starts running and running until he starts noticing that if he goes into the city, he'll be he might manage to escape. But he realizes doing that is also a stupid move because, well, he'll just cut through everyone that gets in his path. From his behavior he, he, that he's observed so far, he doesn't give a fuck who he injures. Hell, he might even kill random people if they get in his way. So, he's still thinking about going, going in a populated area, but his morals get the best of him. So he starts running into the woods. He's running into the woods, and he notices that five minutes has passed, and he says not really following him. So he starts relaxing, and he stops, and all of a sudden, he hears a voice, Why'd you stop? You should have kept on running. And he looks behind him and sees Issei, but it does not Issei. It does not look like Issei. It does not sound like Issei. You can see Issei's face, and you can see carnage. The carnage suit around Issei. But you can see Issei's face, and then carnage peels the symbiote in front of his face. And... When Kiba sees the face of this monstrosity, he's panicking. He's trying to run, but his body won't let him. He decides, no, I have to fight here. He uses his sword burst and stabs his sword that he creates into the ground, making tons of swords pop out of the ground. And all that Carnage does is just makes a sword out of his hand and slashes and breaks every single one of the swords. And he, literally, this causes a smoke screen from the slash. And Kiba starts charging towards Carnage, Carnage Issei, and tries to stab into him. But notices that his, he's not there anymore, in his original position. And he feels a sharp pain in his shoulder. And then he looks to his shoulder and sees a, a, his entire shoulder has been cleanly bitten off. Looks like bite marks. Then he sees Issei looming over him. He just says, that tasted tasty. You taste like venison. And then, he, then Kiba has an instinct just to run. 
So he starts trying to run. And Issei grabs onto his arm, that's barely hanging, by the way, and gets ripped off. And Issei, Issei just starts gnawing into the arm while chasing Kiba, who's running more and more into the woods. And he's in a panicked and desperated, desperated state. And he manages to accidentally make his balance breaker. And once he does, he notices it has so much power. And he's like, maybe I can do a, have a chance at this. He runs back towards Carnage. And Carnage just looks like, oh, so you get a little blade with some savior juice on it. Because you can see it's lighting up with holy magic in it. Which he's confused how Kiba can actually hold this. But he doesn't want that get too far in his mind. And he just grabs the blade. And it goes straight through his arm, which Issei is shocked about. And his arm just flies off. And Issei screams in pain. And Kiba just runs up towards him and says, You fucking failure. Why? Why are you still alive? I was the one that recommended that you were put down. You are you were so lonely, so depressed, so audited out, acted such the innocent, and you never went through any pain like I went through. So I thought you deserved to be put down, because I've went through tons of pain, while you've only went through meager little amount of it. And Issei is furious at this, and he just regenerates his arm, and just pierces it straight through Kiba's, Kiba's gut. And Kiba strikes straight through Issei, straight through his gut, with his sword. And Issei just coughs out blood, and starts to fall over. And Kiba starts striking him, making more blades, stuffing them into into Issei, until he looks like a pincushion right now. There's tons and thousands of swords coming out of Issei, and Kiba thinks that Issei's done, because no one can survive from this. But no, no, no. Carnage and Issei is just eating these swords into Issei, not absorbing them, but just eating these swords. And Issei just gets up and says, Mmm, that was delicious. And... Kiba, who just turned around, was about to walk away, turns around very slowly, feels like time itself is stopping. Every one of his memories are flashing through his eyes, and he's wondering what's happening, and he just thinks, wait, isn't this what you see before you die? And before he can even look around, his point of view is distorted. It's out of whack. He, he feels like, uh, really odd. Because he can't see Issei anymore. And he can't turn his head. But he sees his body fall in front of him. And he thinks, oh, I was already dead. Did you have to... And then he fades and out of consciousness. And scene cuts, Issei, right when he absorbed all the blades and said that one line... He just immediately spreads with all of his might, and he boosted five straight times, but he s but did it quietly, because Carnage didn't actually scream at boost. And Issei just zooms straight forward with a little momentum, more momentum than what Kiva was expecting, and he flashed forward and decapitated him by making his arm turn into a blade. And that's what happened. And Kiba's body slowly fell down with his head clean off. Then Carnage in his mind said, Tasty, tasty. Eat his flesh. And Issei said, No, I have something more to do with this. I want to make something evidently clear to Rias. He picks up Kiba's body, picks up his head, and he starts walking. And he waits till it's night time. He goes in front of the ORC building. Right where they're all currently living. Because of certain circumstances. 
they're living in the ORC building. There's actually dorms there. They're living there. And, well, I Issei just strikes into, into Kiba's gut and just starts ripping out his intestines and stringing them on trees in front of the ORC building. And he starts hanging, just hanging Kiba with his guts. Just hangs him. By tying the guts around his arms and his legs. And then he places the head right on the porch with the note on it saying, I got you a present, Grimmery. And then he just immediately walks away. And just a few minutes later, when Issei walked away, Rias had opened the door because he she heard something and she thought she felt a familiar power signature, familiar presence. She opened the door and she saw Kiba's head, and she screamed, and everyone got out of their dorms. They walked right where the crying Rias is, the screaming crying out Rias is, and. Everyone saw Kiba's head, and they're, they're screaming. Their blood curdle screams could be heard by Issei, who was walking away. And Issei just smiles while walking home. And Rias and her barrage are in panic right now. They're literally about to have panic attacks. They're barfing. Konako can't even hold this in. She just barfs everywhere. So does Rias and Akuno. They just can't hold this in. They're crying out. They're screaming, screaming out, who could do this? And Konako thinks of one person, that being Issei Hyodo. And this sends shivers down her spine. But she knows if she tells anything to them, then she, her life will be in danger. So she hides this fact. And Rias just looks at all of them. At all, all, all in glory of the head of Kiva. She picks up the head and curls it into her chest, starts being in fetal position and cries out Kiba's name. And everyone just starts comforting Rius while wanting to be comforted themselves. And Rius just composes herself and gets up and says, maybe, maybe this is just all an illusion. She's starting to break down. And she just walks outside and says, no, 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 Kiba, Kiba, where are you? I, I won't believe that this is Kiba until I see the body. That's obviously just a fake. That, that, that can't be Kiba's head. And she just places, just throws the head down and just runs outside and she sees Kiba's body being hung by his intestines. And when she sees this, she just starts screaming and she just passes out because her heart can't take it anymore. She has a complete panic attack. She falls to the ground. Everyone runs out. They see the body. They almost fall down like how R Rhea's dead. But no, they compose themselves, they drag Rias back into the ORC, and they place her towards her bed. And they all sleep together, because they're all scared. They're panicked. They're worried. Asya's doing the same thing. But no, this hit Asya worse, because she was closer. The closest to Kiba. And she's just praying. Even though, at this point, the prayers still hurt her when she's praying. She's doing it. And it's burning her. And she doesn't care. She needs to pray to someone. She needs some type of salvation. And she's breaking down away from the group. And we're going to cut to where Issa is just walking home. He opens the door. And he closes it. And he's laughing maniacally in front of the door. Walking into his room. And Karaj says, you did a great work. I... I admire your artwork you did back there. And they're busting out laughing. They just jump onto the bed. Issei jumps onto the bed. And he's laughing himself to sleep. And this is the end of What If Issei Was Betrayed and Got Carnage, Part 4. I hope you enjoy.